G'day everybody, Simon here, Explosive Action, and it is that time of year again. We're going to do the top 25 metal albums of 2023. So if you watch the Heavy Metallurgy stream where we had everybody on there doing our top 15 of the year, including honourable mentions, you've pretty much seen my list here. There's been a tiny change, uh, last minute addition, last minute subtraction. Uh, and I'm also going to talk about my favourite EPs of the year, so that's something that's new if you've watched the stream, you haven't seen that list. But we're going to get cracking straight away here with number 25 on the list. We're going to talk about um, things that I uh, have excluded intentionally, you know, they didn't quite make the list. There's going to be a discussion later about um, things that I'm still waiting to arrive in the mail. And as you can see, I'm all about the physical media, so if I don't have it, I don't show it. Anyway, first one I'm going to take a look at here is Apogeon with Astrolatria I Initiatio. A bit of a mouthful, but this is a quality finish black metal release. Heavy, heavy on the Beherit, drawing down the moon. Basically, it's, it's worship territory here. It is incredibly dark. It's probably a little bit more doomier than you would get from uh, Beherit, but yeah, this is some pretty quality stuff. So. Apogeon, Astrolatria I, Initiatio, that's 25. Number 24 is the self-titled debut with the glorious cover artwork from Claustrum. Claustrum, uh, this is absolutely crushing, dense and blasting death metal with as much ferocity as it has thick, chunky groove, super crisp production, but not overly produced, uh, and this sci-fi cover I'm immediately thinking of Sulphur Eon as a reference point. A fantastic debut album. I really cannot wait to see where this band keeps going. They're out of Italy. Excellent stuff from Clostrum at 24. The next one we have here at 23 is Arbor with Be Behold the Age of Pagan Blood. Very minimal, very atmospheric, very but some looking album cover here, even the font as well. Um, but this is another new quality project from Taurus of Felwinter and Gauntlet Ring. Uh, as good as always, his work is uh, fantastic um, across um, uh, Gauntlet Ring, Felwinter, there's a handful of other bands. Not too sure why some of the bands need to be their own entities, because the stuff is all reasonably similar. But yeah, Arbor, Behold the Age of Pagan Blood. It is just quality, straight ahead, black metal. Uh, and that comes in at 23, highly recommended. Next one at 22, this is the full length, finally, 2LP full length of Ebony Pendant, also self-titled Ebony Pendant. Uh, the long awaited full length from these guys. They've done um, splits, they've done EPs, and uh, yeah, finally here with all the best efforts put in for uh, this one man black metal project, playing very Judas Iscariot, Kekdorak kind of black metal. Um, if you like that earlier era of Lamp of Murma, or you like the Kek to Rack stuff, you're gonna like Ebony Pendant. I think the material on here is actually a bit more complex and a little bit more uh, involved than some of those projects. Um, over two LPs, you would want it to be a bit more uh, dynamic and have a bit more variety, and it certainly does. It's not just pure necro black metal here. Ebony Pendant at uh, 22. At 21, we have very, very exciting debut album here. I was so happy about this one. Uh, fantastic cover. This is Sanctuarium Into the Mephetic Abyss, Spanish two-piece uh, mixing up autopsy with disembowelment, and it's just ugly and it's crushing, just like this cover artwork. Blech. At number 20 now, and this one I haven't even had a chance to show in an update video. We're going to have to get to that one in the new year, but this is the excellent excellent debut release from Dis Imperium called Grand Insurgents Upon Despotic Altars. With a title like that and an artwork like this, yeah, you're getting bestial black death. This is war metal, uh, but features Ascended Dead's vocalist and guitarist. He's basically going where he has with Ascended Dead, but just even more bestial. It is nasty stuff. For someone that really enjoyed the first Profane Order album, but I felt a little bit wanting from the second one. It was good, but it wasn't what I was hoping for. This is the kind of material that I was hoping for from Profane Order this year. This Imperium, uh, really excellent little album here. Number 20. This is Tobra. Who knows? Tobra, Tobra with Therizo. Um, 
This is uh, the guitarist and the drummer from Ara, that's A-A-R-A, Swiss band that I've raved about before, doing a more dark, more evil and traditional style of black metal, uh, including more traditional style vocals. If you think that uh, yeah, the vocal style on Ara is a little bit too much for you, the high piercing screeches, uh, this is lower in register, a little bit more accessible. Um, it's, as I said, it's more darker, it's more evil, but I think overall it's a bit more easy to digest black metal. So yeah, really good stuff here. Because it's got the guitarist from Ara, that style of riffing is very, very similar here. So if you like one, you're probably going to like the others. So at 19, we have Torbra with Therizo. And this is one I think that over time might rise a bit higher in the 2023 list. This is Fabricant with Drudge to the Thicket. This is a very complex uh, sounding and technical progressive death metal album. This kind of stuff where I need to really listen over and over and over. Um, frankly, there's so many releases that come out in a year. This kind of stuff takes me longer than it does for a year of end list a lot of the time to really get to grips with it, but I can recognize quality when I hear it. I just think that over time, I'm gonna be raising this one pretty high through the list because it's really, really good stuff. Um, as I said, technical, progressive kind of death metal, a lot of digest in here, a lot of time ghoul and all of that kind of stuff. I need to spin it a few more times, I think, to really get it, but I know good stuff when I hear it. So yeah, that is Fabricant with Drudge to the Thicket at uh, 18. At 17, we have Vastum with Inward to Gethsemane. I did a review for this one on the Heavy Metallurgy. Very strong album from these guys here. Probably their best since Patricity or Lust, which has always been the high uh, mark, I think, for a lot of people. I think they approach it with this one here. They don't quite eclipse it. Uh, if they did, this album would be higher on the list, but that's not to say it's not an excellent death metal album here from Vastum. Inwards to Gethsemane. 16, we have Void Ceremony, Threads of Unknowing. This was higher on the list uh, earlier in the year, but that latter half of 2023 has really put some bangers in that pushed some things back. Killer progressive death metal either way. Um, I wish I could get it higher on the list, but it's a pretty solid 16 spot here. Um, Phil Tuga from Cathelist, who is a sensational musician, uh, is joined by Damon Bloodgood from Stargazer on fretless bass. It is magical sounding bass guitar. And of course, uh, Garrett Johnson, who is the founder guitarist of the band. Um, and these, these guys just get more inventive on each release. Their previous album really uh, exploded them a lot more from the previous uh, EP on Blood Harvest, um, where they were starting to get a style. They were just sort of death metal. And then they really, on that last album, on 20 bucks spin, they really started to get more into that progressive sound and that fretless bass. But here we are on uh, Threads of Unknowing at 16. It's an excellent album. Coming at number 15, now we have the positively disgusting, dripping, decay, festering, grotesqueries, gore-drenched death grind from Neil Smith of Frightmare, fantastic death thrash band from the early 2000s, mid 2000s, and all formerly of uh, Lord Gore and Blood Freak. Basically, this just sounds like Razorback Records of the mid-2000s. It is fantastic death grind. A lot of groove, a lot of fast stuff, a lot of thrash, a lot of gore, dripping decay, festering grotesqueries at 15. This is Scar and the Dyth with a virulent Providence at 14. Uh, another one I really wish I could uh, have a bit higher. I did have it at, I think, number 10 originally, but... Um, as I said, so many things have come in later in this year. Fantastic Irish atmospheric black metal. One Man Project, uh, their third release. One of the bands I was very happy to discover on Bandcamp um, way back when the first album came out a few years ago. Just one of those lucky finds one day. And I've been following them ever since. Multi-layered, sorrowful with additional instruments like fiddles and mandolins, very lush. Um, very green sounding. It sounds very much like this cover. Two 20 minute length songs over two sides. I highly recommend checking this one out. Scar and the Dyth, Virulent Providence at 14. At 13, Australia represent. This is Pustilence with Beliefs of Dead Stargazers and Soothsayers. Full length debut uh, of this Queensland Australian band. Old school death metal four piece. This is just meat and potatoes death metal it is not dissonant this and cavernous that it is death metal 
for fans of bands like Skeletal Remains that definitely just play that quote unquote death metal. Don't need any adjectives with this one, it is straight up and in your face. Really, really strong debut after a really excellent uh, demo and EP uh, from a couple of years ago. But P Pustilence from Beliefs of Dead Stargazers and Soothsayers. Excellent album here at 13. At number 12, we have Ascended Dead. I already mentioned them once. Even Fall of the Apocalypse. The most barbaric outing of this band yet. It is absolutely ferocious. Uh, put this on the same pedestal as Titan Blood 7 Chalices. When you have members of Funebrarum and Ritual Necromancy amongst the ranks, you're going to get something truly, truly evil and ferocious. And that's what you get here with Even Fall of the Apocalypse at number 12 on the list. 11, we have Astriferous with Pulsations of the Black Orb, another one I did a review for. Uh, after a number of EPs and splits, this debut full length from this Costa Rican band absolutely fantastic cosmic death metal heavily inspired by the darker type of early finnish bands think convols and demigod there's a lot of that sound in astriferous and it works so so well and just soak in that amazing cover artwork there with the black orb there in the center a very strong release at number 11. Before we get into the top 10, I'm going to talk about some of my favorite EPs of the year. I won't show physical copies for this one, I'll just show a cover art here. And the first one is Atheric with Colme Valgesta. Ah, oh, who knows. Uh, very melodic and organic, but a cult sounding Finnish black metal, akin to something like Kagontherus. Uh, very dynamic with lots of melody. Three lengthy tracks approaching almost, but not quite, album length. So it is an EP. Highly recommend this one. Uh, Gauntlet Ring with Raped in the Blood of Angels demo tape. Taurus and Mercenary are both from Felwinter and uh, from um, uh, Arbor that I mentioned before. Uh, that's Taurus is in that one. Uh, who had Felwinter had two demos this year themselves. Uh, the guys are just prolific with, the, with all of their uh, different bands and releases they're putting out. Um, Self-described as the band's most crude release to date, this Gauntlet Ring demo. Uh, the opposite of progressive. This is raw, pagan sounding black metal. A very healthy 40 minutes for a demo and does not at all sound like a raw demo tape. It just happens to be released on cassette only. So that's Gauntlet Ring, Raped in the Blood of Angels. Uh, Lunar Chamber with Shambolic Vibrations. This is an outstanding and very unexpected EP. This one sold me on the cover alone and the fact that there was this EP out of nowhere signed directly to 20 bucks bin. Bam, fantastic debut EP from this band. Very much void ceremony uh, type material or blood incantation at their trippiest. Really looking forward to seeing where these guys go with the full length. Uh, hopefully next year we might get one, who knows. Uh, opposite end of the spectrum for death metal, we have Stenched with Gorging on Mephitic Rot. Kind of breaking my own rule here. I don't have the copy on hand yet, but I've been listening to this digitally for months now from the promo. My copy is in the post. Absolutely the demo tape of the year for me, but it's worth getting the LP as it's got extra tracks on it. Putrid, downtuned death metal, bit like Leprophiliac, but even uglier. Highly recommend this one. Next up is a 7-inch, uh, also on CD2, I think. Malformed with uncontrollable malformity. Uh, Floridian sounding Finnish death metal. Quite a strange mix there. Very straightforward, brutal, in your face with none of the usual Finnish death metal touches that you're kind of used to hearing when someone says that phrase. Uh, they have a mini LP that followed this that I really want to check out, but yeah, uncontrollable malformity, their first uh, five track demo. Fantastic. Uh, two excellent EPs from this particular band, Oa Hex, with the very hard to pronounce Lands Landshap Synachronismum, did my best, and the follow up one, Valkengebed. Oof, mouthful, but really, really two strong EPs of atmospheric black metal from a one man project. Um, I really recommend you check this one out. Fantastic stuff from Oa Hex. Um, Orkblut with Ghost Paths to Septenitron. Uh, this uh, is a brilliant little medieval black metal EP that definitely fans of Crowlock uh, should be subscribing to. Uh, yeah, definitely check out Orkblut. And lastly, I'm going to recommend the Undergang EP that came out this year. Uh, and watch me nail it. 
D. Saev Stadia F. Fordarev. Yes! Uh, one of the best releases uh, from this long standing Danish death metal band. Six songs about the various states of decomposition. What else do you want from a death metal band? Into the home stretch now, the top 10. And I am really thrilled to have this one in the top 10 list. It was one of the best reviews I did for the Heavy Metallurgy this year. I was very, very stoked with the output. The EP they first did was fantastic, and the full length is even better. Excarnated Entity, Mass, Grave, Horizon. Full length from this uh, Portland Quartet. It's their debut album, Crushing Death Doom, that is not afraid to go fast. Think your disembowelment, but not quite that funeral. But they do do that kind of thick and chunky and slow death doom and then just sporadic blasting because why not fans of spectral voice should definitely take note of this one excarnate identity at number 10 number nine thantafaxaf with hive mind narcosis where do i begin with this one um i don't often listen to things as strange as this band but thantafaxaf um really grabbed me with their 2014 album it it was something I played for ages. I had the CD since it came out. It came out on Dark Descent. And the band kind of vanished. There was teasers every now and then about, oh, the band's going to do something more, but didn't think anything would come of it. And then suddenly, sometime this year, brand new album. It is um, very avant-garde in its composition, obviously, but the combination of nine years of work since the last full length. There was a small EP in there, but these guys take that weird guitar style of Blue House Nord modern albums and the weird everything else of something like Imperial Triumphant perhaps. It's not for everyone but it delivered completely for me. This is Thantafaxaf with Hive Mind Narcosis at number 8. At number 8 we've got Demon Sea with Black Star Gnosis a band I've known of for years, but I've never really dug into. Ben Brain Smasher is a big fan of this band, wears the shirts all the time on his channel. Um, and I've never really checked them out, but now with this new album, 2023, I'm a total convert. I need to go back and listen to and purchase more of their previous albums because if they're as good as this, I'm all in on Demon Sea. Pure pure evil black metal with a real heavy presence uh, going since 1991 this is not a new band at all their first full length in eight years uh, i can hear where bands like perverted ceremony get their sound from uh pro fanatica obviously in a very similar style to demon c and different uh, similar pedigree in terms of when they were formed and how long they've been going but I'm really, really enjoying this one. It is just pure evil. The vocals, they are a sort of snarled, whispered kind of thing. Very unique sounding. You're gonna like it or you're not gonna like it. Me, I love it. Demon C, Black Star Gnosis at number eight. This came out of left field. Uh, Dark Descent announced this one. I had no idea what the hell this was. I don't think a lot of people did. It just came out of nowhere. This is Reverence to Paroxysm with Lux Morte. Wow, Mexican death metal that is so heavy and imposing. Um, it can be ultra, ultra slow, but I would never actually call this doom or death doom. It's like Ripakulu meeting Undergang. It is filthy and it is nasty, but it is slow and punishing. That I cannot overemphasize how low tuned and just plodding this is, but then they find speed in a sort of autopsy D beat style every now and then. So it's a bit of a mix. It is the absolute epitome of a record that you put on and go, oh, I should have played this at 45. Actually, it is a 33. Wow. This is reverence to paroxysm, Lux Morte at number seven. At number six, I really wanted to get it into the top five, but it wasn't gonna happen this time. This is Ara with Triade 3 Nyx. Um, they continue to impress me, this band, um, after last year's tri uh, Triade 2. Um, we now get the third one in the trilogy, closing it off. Just absolutely fantastic. Fast, melodic, emotional black metal with those Banshee-like vocals I mentioned during the Torbra review. Comparable to other Swiss bands like Atiga and Tardigrada, um, but it has hooks and it has change-ups that just keep me glued to this album. The, the band make their way, in, they soar, 
they, they just climb in the instrumentation. They get it to a peak and drop it. And they repeat this over and over. It is sensational and it's a theme they've had on all of their works on the Triade trilogy. So definitely check out Ara Triade 3 Nyx at number 6. At number 5, and I am loving the resurgence of this ancient sounding German black metal band, we have Baxax Axa with Devermis De Mysteris. Oh, this is so good. Uh, who would have thought that a band that has done nothing since 1991? A uh, little demo that was then re-released as a split with Ungod would then go on to create two of my favourite black metal albums of the 2020s. It's just unheard of, and uh, Devermis Mysteris continues the sound of the 2021 Catacomb Cult. Baxax Axa play a Worship Him era Samael kind of style. Uh, bands like Mona and Zebeth owe their entire sound to this band and their legacy. Absolutely fantastic. The artwork inside this booklet is just worth the price of entry alone so good and you will be singing from your top of your lungs yeah yeah back sack 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 at number four and a very strong number four we have crucia mentum with obsidian refractions a band that many presumed were dead after 2015's carnal passages I think members quietly emigrated from the UK to the US and then rebooted the project. Um, sticking to their roots though, Crucium Entum play a very dark, riff-focused death metal, not getting bogged down in atmosphere and dissonance. It is just lots of tremolo, lots of double bass, lots of switch sharps. It is very interesting sounding death metal, keeps you on your toes. It's always got a flavor to it that I absolutely love. Look at that cover. That cover may say that it's cavernous, but you're not getting that in this sound here. This is just death metal that is dark and relentless. Cruciamentum, Obsidian, Refractions. Highly recommend this one at number four. At number three, and I think the album that caused a lot of people to do a double take because it seemed to come out of nowhere, this is Ruam with Black Royal Spiritism. As we've said a few times before, this album that Mayhem should have released after Order Ad Ko. Uh, Runa from uh, the Grand Declaration to the Order Ad Ko era. Mayhem continuing on with his style. His AKA was Blasphemer back in those days and he's just continuing on with that style here. He said in an interview that the music uh, that came out of Ruin was inspired by unused demo tapes during Mayhem sessions. He never got to put to good use. Didn't use that stuff directly, but it inspired him to make a new band, and that is Ruin. His riff style is just unmistakable. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's even a cover of uh, Mayhem's Fall of Seraphs on here, which is a fantastic cover. The sounds obviously very similar to the original. Um, the vocalist on here, does a really good impression too of what you would hear at Mayhem in that time. A lot of maniac in there. It is really, really good stuff here. Ruam, Black Royal Spiritism. Highly unexpected, but very rewarding release. At number two, we have Cryptworm, Oozing Radioactive Vermission. I did a review for this on the Heavy Metallurgy and it is an astounding album. I was absolutely floored by this thing. Last year's Cryptworm album made my honorable mentions uh, list, but this one, they've just gone straight to the top. And it honestly shouldn't be that different. It's just the songs are more interesting this time. The riffs have got more hooks. That digging into that Finnish sound is even more obvious, I think, this time around. Uh, heavy, heavy grooves, both Finnish and US inspired. UK based death metal, it stomps, it grooves, it's ugly, it's nasty, the vocals are putrid, the snare sound is as close as you can get to a ping without it, without it actually pinging. So yeah, the songs are all unique and they all anchor around that Demolix style riff. So very, very happy with Cryptworm oozing radioactive emission. It's been on constant playlist for me. It is an addictive listen. Just listen to that first track and that first drop and you know what I'm talking about. Before we get to number one, let's talk about a few things that didn't quite make the cut this year, but they were all good releases. The new Lamp of Murmur, Saturnian Bloodstorm. I thought this was a really strange release for him, uh, sounding very much like um, that mid-era Immortal uh, compared to what he was doing before, but it worked, it worked really well. Who knows where the future is for Lamp of Murmur and what kind of style he's going to ape next, but strong release. 
Majesty's Vast Reaches Unclaimed. This one I haven't had uh, that many listens with, to, it's got to be said. I can recognize the quality in this one, but honestly, I haven't felt compelled to put it on that often. Uh, I know it's very well thought of, and I think I will get into it more when I'm in the more mood for that melodic style death metal that is going back to the late 90s in flames and dark tranquility style. And uh, yeah, when I do, I'll have Majesties there for me. Also, the new Outer Heaven, Infinite Psychic Depths. This one was getting close to joining the list. I was very impressed with this one. The only problem Outer Heaven have for me is that constant dual vocal style that's simultaneous with a mid and a high, always at the same time. Artistic decision, sure, but I kind of wish they weren't doing that. But otherwise, it's really strong death metal out on Relapse Records and has a good groove and it has a good speed to it. So yeah, that's worth checking out. The new Tomb Mold, The Enduring Spirit. Again, this is another example of a band that did better for me uh, with their latest album than the previous one. The uh, last album left me kind of cold. The production was very sterile and I didn't think the songs were that interesting, but The Enduring Spirit, yeah, they've really improved, at least in uh, for me here. I know there's a lot of people that are unhappy with the style, going a little bit more progressive and away from the more meat and potatoes death metal. They were already doing that on Planetary Clairvoyance, but on this one, they're just doing it better. And it was, again, close to joining the top 25, but not quite. Argonthorns, The Ravening. This was, for a period of time, in the top 10 even, but so many things have pushed it backwards. It's a very good release, but I haven't actually been listening to it too much the last few months. This is a good example of everything Cacophonous Records being reborn as a new act. Um, it's got your Balsagoth and it's got your Cradle of Filth and all that kind of stuff just all thrown at you. And uh, yeah, it's definitely worth checking out if you like that fantasy style black metal with big swords and yeah, all that kind of stuff. Very good stuff, but it had to slip out of the list, unfortunately. Um, the two Alpha albums, I was a big fan of them when they dropped, but I haven't actually gone back to them that much since the earlier part of the year. I do need to get back to them. Uh, I do enjoy them, but yeah, by virtue of me not having returned to them that often, it means they're not going to make the list, but doesn't mean they're bad albums at all. The new Moonlight Sorcery. Now, I only just got this one in last month, and I'm still wrapping my head around it. It is, uh, let's say that the band set a template on their first EP and then threw that template away very quickly because what we've got now isn't so much melodic black metal, it's power metal with black metal vocals. It is some cheesy stuff. If you're in the mood for Gorgonzola, it's a good album. Check that one out from Moonlight Sorcery. And the only, I suppose, legacy band that's made my list in some way, shape or form, it didn't technically make the list, but they were really close to it, was the new incantation, Unholy Deification. Best thing they've done in at least four albums for me was going to be on this list at some point, but it didn't quite get there. Uh, it was better than the new Suffocation, it's better than the new Autopsy, it's better than the new Cannibal Corpse, it's better than the new Obituary. Uh, the new incantation nearly made it onto the list, but just not quite. There's also things that I really, really liked listening to online, but as the copies have not made their way to me yet, or I've not had enough time to listen to them, they weren't going to make a list. So the new Ringar of Momentous Endless Night, one of the many Alex Poole projects this year. And uh, you know, it sounded great and I've ordered it, but it's still in the post. Same with the new uh, Natfard, The Abyss. This one's only just landed and I have spent no time with it at all. On initial listen, it sounds more ferocious than the previous Natfard, but yeah, I've only just received it, so can't really put that on the list, can I? There's another new band that uh, came out of nowhere, it seems, um, in the middle of December, and I quickly ordered it when I saw the cover, listened to the samples online and went, wow, and it seems a lot of people are doing the same. Blood Man, or Blood Man, uh, the spelling will be below, Castle Inside the Eclipse, new project by the guitarist from uh, Ars, Venef Ve Ars Veneficium, say that 10 times fast, it is some really strong um, melodic and harsh black metal that sounds a bit like that first Moonlight Sorcery EP, uh, so yeah, and an excellent cover on as well, that one's definitely going to get some plays when it shows up. 
uh, Disguised Malignance. Oh, I really wanted to get this one onto the list, but it was proving kind of difficult to get a copy on LP without paying too much, so I had to play the waiting game until something was a bit cheaper. It's now in transit, but unfortunately cannot make the list this year. Putrid Yell, Consuming Aberration. This is good fun chili and meat and potatoes, horror themed death metal. Um, yeah, I don't know if it would have made the list, but it is good fun and it's in transit. So we will see that one in an upcoming update. Uh, Phobicosm for Foreordained. Um, I have this CD. It has only just come in. I've given it one listen through. But Phobicosm is one of those bands that is kind of treading in that ulcerate style where you need to really focus and listen to it something a bit mixed between ulcerate and immolation that's dark and it's hard to penetrate so yeah need to give it a few more listens before i could consider it for a list so unfortunately it can't make it this year uh the new deteria rock the rebirth i've only heard some samples of this one but it is very interesting and very cool that they're still going even though it's still just the vocalist and a whole new band behind it it sounds very similar to the classic stuff that we all had in the early 2000s um, haven't managed to grab a copy of this one yet but I had to acknowledge the deteriorate rot is still going and it sounds good to my ears um, this one was oh, gutting I couldn't get this on a list Voldren Throne of the Lunar Soul I had to wait until I had enough things to be able to make a decent sized order from Blood Harvest so that order has been placed I don't think it's been shipped yet but I figured well if you buy one Voldren why not buy all three so that'll come to me at some point I've been listening to the promo digitally for about six weeks and it is superb. Uh, it is sort of dissection kind of Swedish melodic black metal, but uh, they're a US band as far as I'm aware and it's really, really good stuff. And it's a two LP release, lots of music in that one. The last one is one that uh, I really love this release. I nearly broke down and bought the CD a couple of times, but I said, no, I will wait for the LP. And then the LP kept getting delayed. And now it's a 2024 LP, Blood Oath Lost in an Eternal Silence. This is just fantastic death metal, very thrashy sounding death metal. Um, yeah, uh, others have talked about this and I'm really disappointed I couldn't include it, but yeah, that copy, hopefully I'll be able to order the LP soon. And that brings us to my number one release of 2023. This has not changed since it dropped. I knew when I got it and when I was listening to it that this was something truly special. And it is not the only time tonight we've talked about an Alex Poole release. This is Haxanu with Totem Pass, my number one album of the year. Absolutely amazing sophomore release from Alex Poole. Uh, his best project to my ears so far is Haxanu and therefore this is his best album so far. You can hear equal parts of Umgwa from Poland and Spectral Wound in this sound. It's catchy, it's riffy, there's a lot of melody. Um, it's very European sounding for US black metal. Addictive, raging, icy black metal riffs. A lot of memorable ear candy but that doesn't make it any less visceral absolutely fantastic. Alex Paul is in a dozen of excellent bands including Gardgaster, Chaos Moon, the aforementioned Natterford, Ringar and even now Krieg. So many good bands. He's a very talented individual uh, and this one he teams up with a relatively new guy to the scene. Uh, the vocalist goes by just the initials LC. Don't know too much about him but this is a total modern black metal assault that has rarely left my playlist in my turntable. Totem Pass by Haxanu. If you like those last couple of Umgwa albums, I highly urge you to check out this band. It is fantastic. And the cover artwork is amazing too. So that is my top 25 metal albums for 2023, including some EPs, some honorable mentions, things I missed and things that got missed. I uh, hope you enjoyed this list this year. Uh, that's the second year I've done a video of it. If you follow me on Facebook, then I've been doing these as a text-based list for about six years now, something I enjoy doing. And uh, yeah, it's uh, been a really strong year. There is uh, plenty of good stuff already coming out in 2024. I've heard the promos for the new Depigus. It is excellent. The new promo uh, for the Unish Bricklick and Colton 
is going to be phenomenal. I am so excited for that one. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. I've just pre-ordered the new Abigail album and I don't even know what it sounds like because they're not releasing samples. I'm sure it's going to be strong. Abigail always is. Plenty of other things that will be coming out as well later next year and we're just going to have to see what comes out. Uh, but as for now, thanks for sticking with me through this update video and uh, for the whole year of me doing metal videos. And uh, yeah, plenty of content for 2024 still to come. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.